Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher, and on today's synth clips, we're going to talk about the power of using only three notes. Now, this is a trick I actually discovered recently. Um, I may have known it in my mind prior to that, but this is the first time I really had to put it into words. I was at a KnobCon, and one of the things I like to do at KnobCon is bring a guitar and a bunch of weird pedals and just create a stereo ambience thing. And this time, I had brought an ASM Hydrosynth uh, desktop unit. So it had the pads, and I had a guitar with a wireless MIDI transmitter on it. And it was in a mode where it would only send one note at a time. And the other person wanted to play the pads on the Hydrosynth. And I thought about it for a while since we hadn't practiced or anything, and I said, I'll tell you what. I'm only going to play one note. I only want you to play a maximum of two notes on the pad. And the reason is it's hard to make something wrong. And I, I know in music you don't really talk about, you know, things are exactly right or exactly wrong. But you know sometimes when you hear something and it's just not right. And I kind of reasoned out that it's much harder to do something wrong with only three notes than if you're doing four notes or five notes or six notes, especially if multiple people are involved in making those notes. And so we just did a jam where he just held two pads and then occasionally moved one pad to the other pad. And I did my single note and it came out really well. And so I thought I'd share that in a synth clip. And I'm in both camps on the learning by ear and learning music theory. I know there's a sentiment, I see it on the forums where people are saying, oh, I don't want to learn music theory, it's going to ruin me, you know. And I could tell you I've done both worlds. I grew up playing by ear. Uh, I started at five, just kind of knowing how to play by ear on simple songs. And I got better at learning songs, but it really wasn't until college that I finally learned music theory, the correct way to identify chords, the correct way to understand scales and key signatures and all that. And I gotta say, it really didn't wreck any of my innate ability to just play or do things that I wanted to out of my head. But what it really did was allow me, one, obviously, to expand what I could come up with, but even more importantly, I could talk to other musicians and say, no, no, uh, you need to play a major third on that, or uh, you're playing a minor seven chord and it really needs to be a minor major seven chord there or something. And all of a sudden, just in those words, they would understand what I was talking about. And it also really helped with remembering how a song goes. Oh yeah, I have to do this chord then that chord. And, and it's so much easier to remember chord names and scale names than to try and remember exactly how the song goes for everything. So this is one that kind of leans back towards someone who doesn't have theory yet um, or has some theory but wants to play on a synthesizer and make interesting stuff. That's not always the same, you know, hold one note and play the five and the flat seven in your other hand. Um, this is a way of kind of breaking out of that a little bit. And so what the rules are is that you never have more than three notes and try to spread the notes apart, but they will work in clusters as well, uh, depending on how weird you want to get. But have each of the notes just move one at a time and don't have them make great jumps. And you'll find that you create things musically and after a while in your ear, you'll start hearing which note you might want to move up or down. And you can move it a whole step, a half step. You can move it greater than that. There really are no rules, but start with having just three notes, some amount apart, and then just start moving them. And so there's really not a lot more to say about that. Uh, so I'm going to just try and do it, and I'm going to try to not use my, the theory part of me to play the correct notes. I'm going to try to just kind of play random notes that someone might play if they weren't sure exactly what they were doing. But I just want to show you that it kind of does work. And of course, you can always break the rule. Um, you can add more notes as you get more confident. But sticking with the three notes really does work. And remember that the bass line counts as one of those three notes. So now it's all playing. And to do that, I'll be playing the Korg Wave State Wave Sequencing Synthesizer. I mostly chose this one because I haven't used it yet in a synth clips and because it has lots of different kinds of sound, both synthetic as well as sampled. So I thought it'd be a good match to do this.
So just a bunch of examples. And you know, a couple of times there were some notes that are not right. <laughs> you know, they're not wrong, but they're not perfect. But you can see that there is a power in this in not overcomplicating what you're doing either in your arpeggiations or in your chords. Uh, try keeping it to three notes, especially try it with two other friends. Have each person play one note and try and have them listen, you know, and, and each take turns moving. And, and when one person moves, then the other two try and find the next note that sounds good with what they did. And over time, you'll build up a system and, and you'll start seeing patterns. Uh, there are definitely lots of line cliches that I used on this. So hopefully you'll you'll start using these in uh, your performances. Uh, if you have any further ideas for synth clips, please pass them along. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.